Any positions you may suggest? Any techniques you did? Get me out of here! SOS! Man, what are we gonna do? Ganyan! <laughs> you have so much help, you know, ganyan. <laughs> when Ralph and I were here, and saw how she is, she's exactly like me! You won't get a sour moon, a sour moon, a sour moon, a sour moon, da 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 da. Oh, I wanna cook for the other day. Oh, I'm gonna cook for the other day. Uh. Hi everyone! Hello! Hi! <laughs> I ask you all on Instagram, what are some questions that you would like to ask me and my sister-in-law, Isa, about hey. life in general? So we gathered the best ones and hopefully um, through answering the, these questions, we'll be able to, to help some women and new moms out there who have a lot of questions on their mind and um, yeah, game. <laughs> and just share our journey, I guess. Yeah. You know? yeah. Been trying to conceive for about four years, going five. What should I do? Kind of losing hope. Any positions you may suggest? Any techniques you did? Do a quickie <laughs> on election day. <laughs> you can better answer this because we weren't trying. In a nutshell, what my experience was, tried so hard, for a number of months, maybe even loosely for a year or two, gave up mentally and said like, IVF na lang, why not? Let's just go for it. And then that was the month where we were blessed with natural conception. And that has happened to so many other women as well. I yes. know a handful of women. The moral of the story is, it's when your mind and your body is relaxed and you let go and you surrender. And you just like put your faith in like, if it'll happen, it, it'll happen. Easier said Aww. than done, I know, especially when you're under a lot of pressure, outside mm. pressure from family and from people, like your friends all have babies. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, and then the pressure is actually in your head. Yes, so that, and that's what you have to let go of. Yeah. That's, I guess, the spiritual answer, but I think the more practical answer that I'd like to say is definitely doing a lifestyle change. Oh, we definitely. Definitely not fasting, eating well, watching your sleep, de-stressing, being more wise with your time because you need to feel relaxed. Nga, yun nga. Another practical answer to that is, I think, um, which was something we did at the very start, even mm -hmm. a year before we tried, is see a fertility doctor. Oh, okay. That gives you, that will give you a picture of like where you stand. Yeah. So if you both been, stand, because it's both. I think it's not just the woman that needs to be checked. I think it's both man and mm -hmm. woman. Pag sinabi niya, I'm kind of losing hope. losing hope. That means she's already vibrating at a very low frequency. Kasi ano ka na eh, mm. yung papunta ng desperado yun, mm -hmm. di ba? Mm -hmm. So, ang ano ko sa'yo, tanggalin muna yun sa isip. Do something for you and your husband, partner first. Enjoy things first and Take it out of your mind. Take a first. break Take from a it. Break. Take a break from, from it from first. It. Reset. Reset and then reset and reassess the changes you can make. So I completed your sentence. <laughs> My last thought on this, um, which has to do with de-stressing and lowering your cortisol levels. I actually left a work thing that was causing me a lot of stress ah. wherein I felt the anxiety going through my body. Yon. The catalyst for the major lifestyle change for me, which was already at the, towards the tail end of trying that. Mm. I felt it was like that one piece in my life that was really causing me so much stress. So I said, bye. My family is more important and like I don't care about anything else right now. Ay bonga. So there, I, I, I prioritized myself and my family and really dedicated my all my energy into just like relaxing good luck we wish you all the best <sighs> okay can you give advice on how to be a healthy mom while having months of sleepless nights whoever is helping you at home whether it's your husband plus someone else or just your husband come up with a routine wherein you take shifts you don't have to do everything together. Maybe the first week or two, Ralph and I did everything together, even changing nappies together. <laughs> we had to learn. Because you were learning together. Yes, but but after a while, we did shifts already. While one person is on duty, the other person is resting. Also, one of my biggest mistakes before is that there were lots of nights where I did the night care by myself and I would let Ralph sleep. So next time around, dapat talaga, I will lay in bed and somebody will hand me my baby to breastfeed and take the baby from me. Having said that, if you have access to a night nurse, start interviewing them when you're pregnant because they get booked out. Speak to someone who you trust 
and ask them what it's going to really be like and ask them what you're going to need. And the people you invite into your postpartum space, make sure they're the right people. If you wanna attempt to do it alone, by all means, but just make sure you have like a backup, like your mom, your mom-in-law, your sister, like whoever who will be there available to catch you if you can't do it by yourself anymore with, 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 with your husband, with your yeah. partner or just on your own because some some single moms have to do it all on their own. You probably did more self-care. I, I did, I did. I was very lucky because Ben works with Evan and then Evan's wife, Anka, has this platform called OM Health, a company website that's tailor fit for women's health. I wanted to prepare myself to have like the best nutrition as much as possible. A lot mm. of traditional Chinese, Chinese. medicine, um, tonics and herbs pre-packed already. Pinapakuluan lang siya sa umaga. Meron din siyang kasamang chaa. So I was doing that for one month. And these things, like, they're different every day. Ah. Sometimes we bark ng tree, may ganun mm. iba-iba. A lot of mushrooms were there. I was having a lot of warming things for the body. And if you have access to a lactation consultant, Yun. before pa, before. Na, what happens is a lot of women think, wing it. wing it. It pays to just be a little more prepared. Mm -mm. Um, I'm the type to wing a lot of things, to be honest. Because um, I go with the flow. But, that one, because of circumstances, I really prepared na way before I gave birth. Look into a breastfeeding oh. and sleep consultant beforehand because they will really guide you. How to take care of myself during pregnancy. Skincare, makeup, food, work out. While pregnant, I really mm. made sure I was paraben free. Me also. Um, I was particular about my skincare, skincare and anything that touched my skin. Yeah. Made sure it was pregnancy safe. <clears throat> eat as healthy as possible, but also eat something that will make you happy. High DHA diet. And I just enjoyed my food. In terms of fitness, I was working out a lot. I'm very grateful. Actually, at 39, 40, I was still able to do that. Thank you, Lord. It became less and less and less because I was getting tired a little more. I encourage moms to move. Of course, knowing that it's safe for your baby because again, every pregnancy, every journey is different. Some um, women can't some move. Some women can't move or are on bed rest. But if you are able to, please move and do something fun for you and your baby because as you can see, Deya is a very happy baby. So I always think like maybe because I did Zumba, I was happy mm -hmm. despite the challenges that we faced through the pregnancy. Maybe nakatulong. Hindi ko talaga alam. Do you get lonely days as a mother, wife, etc.? What do you do? Yeah, so me, I was super lonely and feeling isolated. So Because you were. Yes, I am a Filipina living in a foreign country away from my friends and my family and to make things more challenging, we live in the countryside, yeah. even away from the city where my handful of friends live. When I was pregnant, I was actually by myself most of the time, rarely seeing my friends and thinking like, ang saya siguro ko na sa Philippines ako yung buntis ako. After giving birth, yeah, that was very, very, very challenging. And oftentimes, like I would cry over just how lonely it was. When Ralph went back to work, I had a baby and just me and the baby and like what what do I do with this baby? I really had to make an effort to to find friends. So so in Australia there are moms groups that are organized by the community health nurse where they yeah where they so they know who who gave birth uh, during around the same a certain time. period and then they contact you for meetups. So it's like once a week for a month. So so find if there are, are any play groups or, or moms groups close by where you could just like have somewhere to go with your baby. For me the loneliness and isolation was really amplified and. It it drove me crazy. This is very common for a lot of Filipinas who live abroad, who are far away from their families, and they have to do everything by themselves. It's like you can't catch a break. You don't have any alone time. For moms who are in that situation, if you can't find anyone close to you who you can have as a support system, I think call up your family all over the world and your friends and find out who can come to visit you. And plot it out. So when one person leaves, you're alone for a few days and then the next person leaves. I was very lucky that my that my best friend in San Francisco and in the Philippines was able to just like book a ticket and come because I really cried for help. Well, being from San Francisco. <laughs> from San Francisco talaga. Ikaw oh. na ang may oh. ano, friend of the year award. Ikaw. For someone who was surrounded by people. How Already? Was, yeah, how was the feeling of loneliness for you? 
it still was there. Just because you have people around you doesn't mean that you won't feel isolated or you won't get FOMO or whatever, especially if there's social media. In the first two months, it was different for me. I wasn't seeing other people's lives because I wasn't on social media. Praise God I made that decision. Me too. I actually deleted Instagram from my phone. For two months, I was really offline. My husband, his life just went on. Like, <laughs> played paddle, tennis was working. Me, I'm suddenly just at home. Stuck in, at home. Oh, and I, because of my personality, kaw nga mas madalas ka pa sa bahay, di ba? Like, mm. you like being home. Like, I grew up not liking being home. I was really an old Palalabas. Workout. Palalabas talaga oh. ako. And feelings of isolation. When I went back to Instagram, syempre mas yan, makita mo pa. Parang sa ng buhay nila. But at the same time, it wasn't too much for me kasi for the first time then in my life, I just loved and still love Daya so much that I didn't feel so bad about missing out. And also, I was able to go back to work. And by the third month, I had a thing na for Edamam. I had a shoot. I had an event. But then, when I went back to work, dun naman yung again yung mom guilt. Mm. So the feeling of isolation now became overwhelmed. Na you have to just keep reaching out. Reaching out to keep friends. Reaching out. Check in on your friends who have just given birth. Yeah. They will need it. And also, like how how many times did I say like get me out of here? S O S. Yo ako na dito. Tapos ako naman. How many times were you like, pumunta ka na dito, pumunta ka na dito? I'm like, ang hirap, ang hirap to travel with a baby by myself. Kami naman. Ako naman yung, hindi, hindi ko nga kaya, walang yaya, paano ako pupunta dyan? To round off this topic, I also must say that even if like, we were sort of living in isolation in the countryside, I just have to express my gratitude and appreciation for the amount of space and fresh air Aww. and sunlight and private grass, huge Whoa, pass of grass that we that we have access to, and we are five minutes away from like nature reserves mm. and bushwalks, and twenty minutes away from waterfalls, mm. and ten minutes away from wineries. My early postpartum day, where I roll out of bed and open the sliding door barefoot, I can walk on our own patch of grass, and I can sit there and hold my baby under the Shut sun. Up. Things like that. Um, While we were doing it from a rooftop. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And one more thing is that if you are a mama who is going through postpartum by yourself or occasionally with your partner, your husband, the good that comes out of that is that your baby spends all their waking hours with you. So everything that they are, everything that they absorb, is from you. You're present for every milestone, every cry, every nappy change, every giggle. You're there. You see it all. So those are the those are the priceless things that mm. you can't take back. You can't play it over. You because yeah. they're so fleeting. Doing things by myself and complaining so much about it, and then the moment passes and you look back on it. I what what I realize now is that you really need to embrace every season that you're in in motherhood because it only lasts for a short amount of time. Mm. Kahit na when you're in the thick of it and you're in survival mode, mm. and all you want to do is sleep and thrive. It will pass, and when you look look back on it, you kind of miss those days where, like, you're breastfeeding every one to two hours, and hindi ka natutulog, and you fall asleep with your baby in your arms. But when you're going through it, you're dreading it, and then the next phase comes when they're on solids and stuff like that, and you're cooking everything by yourself. Um, <laughs> Lean into the season that you're in and remember it. Maybe even journal it. I didn't have the bandwidth for that. Oh. Reflection ko lang ng sarili ko. I don't even know if I'll be blessed with another mm. opportunity to get to do this for another child. Mm -hmm. So, kung kailang ko siyang patulugin ng nandito, ang sarap. Sabi ko lang, mm. salamat, Panginoon. Kahit bumibigat na siya. Mm. Like, I'm just <laughs> grateful I get to do this. Even with Ayaya. I try my best to be as present for day as I can be. And you know, you hear Isa talk a lot about help and a yaya this and a yaya that, but actually when you see her with Daya, super hands-on. Oh <laughs> when Ralph and I were here and saw how she is, she's exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> the hands-on is like 
a mom who doesn't have help. Ang hindi lang niya ginagawa. Baka dancer ko lang talaga sila. Nag Naguhugas ng pinggan at ng laundry. <laughs> Ayun, How to prepare for being a first-time mom? Like we mentioned before, if you have access to a lactation consultant and a sleep consultant, already work with experts in those areas just to give you some wisdom on how to go about things so you're not really winging everything and problem-solving everything. Like, you may idea ka na. Kung masyadong expensive yun, there are books that moms swear by. In the UK, The Contented Little Baby. In the US, it's Moms on Call. In Australia, it's Save Our Sleep. So these are three different books by three different authors that talk about sleep and routine. The moms that I know who have used those books, their baby started sleeping through the night very early, as in four months old. But then again, that's not the measure of successful parenting and a healthy baby. I'm just saying, having a routine and having your baby sleep through the night is healthy for the entire family because nga, it solves that energy drainer and all-consuming sleep deprivation. Kasi yun ang nagpapahirap sa parenthood, di ba? Pag hindi ka natutulog. Tsaka kapag aligaga ka, hindi ka organized, hindi mo alam, okay, what time does this happen? What, what time does this happen? But I think just having a guide, so reviewing books like that, will just help you be more organized throughout your day so that um, parenting can be a little bit smoother and not always like survival mode, like yeah. wondering what comes next. Aware Baby by Dr. Aletha Salter is a book that was highly recommended by my friend Chicho and Sarah. If some people don't really love to read books, there are congestible content around this um, that you can find online. I think my biggest takeaway also, even if I had a list and everything, I waited until the end of my third trimester. I was like, may time pa ako, may time pa ako. One month is enough. But no, what I say to my friends who are pregnant and having a baby, like second trimester after like the 20th week ch checkup, Start fixing your nursery now, like buy everything that you need so that for your third trimester, everything is in its place and you can relax. You're not cramming because mm. cramming when you're waiting to go into labor, about to give birth, whatever, is super stressful and you're not able to enjoy me also. The final days and the final weeks of being pregnant and alone time with your husband. It's like at 38 weeks pregnant yet, I think I was still building furniture by myself with a screwdriver and like just you know sl slithering on the floor because i couldn't get up to like lift parts of the whatever furniture i had to build let us not do that to our pregnant selves and just start planning everything as early as possible and also talk to all of your friends who have babies and ask them is there anything you would like to pass down yeah everything yes. doesn't have to be brand new brand especially new. clothes uh, naging reality ko lang. you know we were away for most of the second trimester so what happened was when i got here mm. so people wanted to see me and then the burr months happened so of course, as a social butterfly, kung saan saan na naman ako napunta, I didn't even have a cocoon stage. Then finally, when mm. my fluid dropped, I was supposed to be induced na much earlier than when Dea was born, like two weeks before. That was the only time I started planning because I major thought nga I had yan. major mm -hmm. cramming. I had time, I had time, I had time. Because I was also told by a friend not to prepare too early kasi masakit uh -huh. pag mawalan ka. Tumatak yun Tumatak sa'yo. Yun. Uh -huh. But I think, honestly, start preparing. Yeah. In hindsight, like just prepare, just little things here and there. Maybe not too much, just enough. Yeah, ako, in terms of the list, I inherited a Google spreadsheet from the wife of um, one of my friends and I customized it according to what I think we actually needed, down to like how many sets of ganito and ganyan. And then like I would highlight things as I acquired those. So, I got lists too from Anika, mm -mm, mm -mm. from Crystal, who got, a, it was an Excel sheet with from different moms. Mm -hmm. Parang moms, iba iba. I didn't even have like a, a white noise machine, a baby monitor. I didn't have these things when Sadie was born. We only, we only acquired yung mga specialty items na ganyan, like when she was already, when we were about to sleep train. Talaga? Oo. No, napakakala ako we, we, we really only had the bare necessities. How sister-in-law hood, I, I don't know how to properly oh, say it or ask I'm it, but me. what's it like being sisters-in-law? Oh, yun na lang. Going through this at the same time, mm -hmm. that's what's unique about it. The most significant thing right now is going through pregnancy and postpartum at the same time and having ba babies and parenthood and having 
having babies that, that are that are the same age. Malaking support system talaga. Like yun nga when I came here nga to the Philippines. Oh, crib care of Isa Calzado. Ganito care of Isa Calzado. Like everything like she nila. Ah. Dinawagan ko lang yung mga distributors uh -oh. sa mga kayaman. Oo. Uh -oh. Just like, you know, it's such a blessing to have someone who understands just like help, support in a big way. The support talaga. That's the biggest thing. Having someone support you who who understands because they're going through the same thing. Yeah. What we also love is like how information is passed on between uh, we us share, and shared. We share a lot of information. Yeah, a lot of yeah. information. On um, health and nutrition. Yeah, so... And then just like baby stuff in general, right? And marriage. Mar marriage. Marriage. There's a lot of marriage. The husband's 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 In the grand scheme of things. Oh, oh. They're always happy with us. Yes, they're always happy with us. They're always happy with us. We're always happy with us. We're always happy with us. So, we're always happy with us kumbaga kinalabasan ng ating mga babies nung kinumbay ng ating mga jeans. Oo. Uh, question for you. How do you manage your time if you're a working mom? Working and twerking mom. Mm. Kasi may social life pa eh. Tigas din ang ulo ko eh. Actually, it's a lot of having to say no to a lot of things. They call it work-life harmony, but it's really a balancing act of sorts. But learning to say no. I think it looks different for every person because some have a corporate job mm. and that's very like structured. So you're away nine to five. Yes. I guess first is the support you'll have because somebody will have to take care of the child mm. when you're not there. Some are breastfeeding moms also. Pumping. Pumping that's on a, the go. That, that's something I never had to experience. Meeting with your village or it could be your partner is your village. Really coming up with routine, structure, and delegating, delegating, delegating tasks. tasks. Oh, oh. From a perspective naman of a mom who is alone um, most of the time during the day and you know can only do things when the baby is sleeping and sleep when the baby sleeps. Getting Sadie to, to sleep early and sleep through the night until she wakes up, so meaning not waking up overnight anymore, was very important for us early on because it's when she's asleep is when I actually have time for myself and I get to do like life admin and like the little work here and there. Take your bath. If this is your reality wherein you can only do stuff when the baby is sleeping, I think one thing to really work on is sleep. Mm -mm. Because when you're relaxed around their bedtime where you don't have to hold them to sleep for like 30 minutes and then put them down and they're only down for like 30 minutes more. It's like you Ayun only have 30 yun. minutes. Ganun. Ang sarap kasi ng feeling na when your baby is asleep for like 90 minutes and you really get so much work done, that's when you can do your meal planning and, and, and everything. When the baby is awake, the man have a safe space to set them down. So like an enclosed area that's fairly big where they can move around and you can you can stand somewhere, sit, sit somewhere and see them. So that's when you can get your work done, when they're happily playing by themselves. Even yeah. if it's just for 15 to 30 minutes per wake window, that's already a lot of time for us moms, right? So there, that's my, that's my two cents.